Hey, what's up, Axie community? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Axie Player One, and in this video, I'm going to talk about scholarships, what they are, what the risks are involved, how you can get one with me, how you can get one with other managers, and also just talk about the general idea and the feel about why I do scholarships. Um, this video is an updated version to the previous one, so make sure this is the one that you are um, understanding. And in this video, I have created some magic words, which will, um, you will need those when you apply for a scholarship. And the reason I've done this is because I need to make sure that scholarships are not only watching my content, but they are understanding it and they are watching it fully. So throughout this video, there will be five magic words. Some are written, some are spoken. So please keep an eye out for those. I also do want to say, please do not share these words out to other people to make the process easier. If I find out you have shared these words, uh, which is obviously making sure that other people can't get the information properly, I'll, I'll just um, bar you from the scholarship process, which I don't want to do because I am a nice guy. <laughs> I think so anyway. Okay, so what is a scholarship? Well, a scholarship is basically a child account of a manager's account and they lend you three axes to play with so you can play Axie Infinity at zero cost, which is a pretty great deal. Um, usually uh, with scholars, there is a split of the SLP earned and you earned SLP through adventure and through gameplay. Um, every month or maybe two times a month, the um, SLP will become available and your manager will cash that out and then give you your percent. So a manager is, has to buy and breed axes, and this can be quite expensive. Like I got into Axie when it was at its peak, so I was spending three hundred to five hundred dollars per axe, and so to you know, f just to give that three axes at that price out to someone, that's one thousand five hundred dollars. Um, so I currently have thirty scholars. And I have spent probably about $30,000, in fact, probably more in this game already. Which brings me to my next point. Um, what are the risks? So the risks to me are I can lose my Axie if you break the rules. And breaking the rules are like multi-accounting, uh, energy manipulation. And these are all things that I advise you to go off and research before you play. Um, because these things will get your axes banned and it will also get my axes banned, which means I lose my investment and I also can't use those axes. There is also um, risks to you because you will lose the scholarship and any SLP that you have earned, you will also lose. But the biggest thing is there's a risk to the community and that is because um, by blacklisting my account means I can't scroll out to other people. So it's not just your account that you will be breaking the rules on, you're potentially ruining it for other people. So if uh, my account gets banned and my scholarships accounts get banned, that's 30 other scholars that already have just lost their chance of making money. And that's not cool. You know, in, in the great words of Buddha, don't be a dick, right? So, and on that note, let's say the magic word is Buddha. Okay, so you also need to beware guys because I have seen lots of managers um, online do lots of dodgy kind of stuff. Um, first of all, they do a 70-30% split, so you only get 30%, which, I mean, you need to know your worth, guys. If you're grinding several hours a day to make them 70% of your profit, you might as well go work in a convenience store because at least you only work 40 hours a week, you know, for probably better money. Um, I've also heard of managers asking for um, unsolicited pictures. Um, this is just creepy and wrong. And if anyone ever tells you that you need to provide anything like that, just get out quick. You know, I would make a post about it. I would let everybody know um, because this is disgusting behavior and it's, um, what's it called? Uh, it, it's, it's predatory behavior. And I think that's just, uh, it actually like grinds my gears a little bit. So yeah. Um, also, I've heard of uh, managers deleting scholars' accounts and then just never speaking to them again. So you spend all your time um, earning SLP and then your account is removed. You're removed from the people's Discord. You can't contact them. And in this space, if you don't know who you are talking to or who you are um, working with, um, then that could happen, you know. So I always advise you to make sure that you at least know who your manager is a little bit more than just a random person who said, hey, I'm giving scholarships away. 
And this brings me to the, the second point, which I think I kind of touched on a little bit when I said deleting accounts, but lots of managers make it a minimum requirement that you earn X amount of SP, X, SLP. So let's say like they will say, okay, before you can cash out, I want you to earn 3000 SLP. That's a month, maybe more than a month of um, grinding. And then once you hit that, their accounts have been deleted and disappeared. So again, guys, you've got to be very careful. This is why I am very big on honesty and trust in my community. And because of all this, I do like to build a relationship with my scholars. Now you can see me, you know, hi, my name is Mark. I'm Axie Player One. Um, I'm always active. I'm on my Discord active. Um, my scholars have a separate hidden channel. So when I do the SLP cash outs, it all gets posted there. I post the uh, transparent, um, the sorry the transaction URL address just to be transparent so you can see that I have actually made those payments um, and that way it can be tracked back and I think this is also vital because it's not just you that um, I need to be trusting you also need to be trusting me it's a two-way street right so because of that let's say the magic word is trust <laughs> okay so why am I giving out scholarships um, so let me tell you a little bit about myself so I'm 33 and I'm from the UK um, I've, I, I got to the age of about 25, six, and I just realized that what I was doing every day, I didn't want to do. I was working 40 hours a week, sometimes more going in at weekends, you know, sat at a computer, just doing something that I enjoyed, but it wasn't fulfilling. So I went traveling for a couple of years. I worked on cruise ships. I did all South America, um, the Cayman Islands, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and then I came back to the UK and I still felt like I was still stuck in that working for somebody else. So I wanted to be free. So I moved to Japan. Now, unfortunately, um, when I moved to Japan, uh, Corona happened. So I got a job teaching. Now I'm a senior software architect for a financial blockchain technology startup. Um, so I've basically gone back to where I was when I was 25 and it suddenly dawned on me that I'm in this amazing country. I'm in Asia, which is a, a region of the world I've never been in before. And I'm still stuck at a desk working God knows how many hours over time and just not enjoying myself. Um, and then I came across um, this play to earn video um, about NFT gaming in the Philippines. Um, now, this was run um, by play to earn, which is a YouTube channel. I put the picture up there. Um, and it just hit me that all of a sudden, like this game is really helping people. So I was like, I didn't know what Axie Infinity was, so I wanted to get involved in it. And then I realized that Axie Infinity uses AXS token, which is their native governance token. Um, and I was really lucky that I was part of the Binance Launchpad, which was a kind of lottery style giveaway. And I won several, several thousand AXS. So straight away I was really lucky that I had access to all these AXS so I could jump straight into the game and put lots of investment in. Now I sold about 80% of my AXS when AXS hit $10. So I wish I'd have waited until it was $90 and this would be a whole different story right now but um, you know it happens. Um, I've still managed to be able to go on and make 30 scholars in a month which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, also, I'm the type of person, like, I love Star Trek and I love sci-fi and fantasy. And I really like the idea of this tokenized economy in the future where transactions are open and transparent. And I'm very big on crypto. And I also am uh, a huge fan of Ready Player One, which is why my name is Axie Player One, if anyone is wondering. And yeah, so basically I'm just a futurist. So I think... The magic word now will be future. Okay, so scholarship mindset. Now this is something I want to touch on because recently, especially with SLP crashing and a lot of the stuff that's going on with dodgy managers and dodgy groups and scams, the scholar mindset is very important. And I want you guys to have the mindset where you are enjoying yourself. And uh, Mark Rober, who used to work for NASA, but he's now a YouTuber and he was an engineer at NASA. So he, he builds all these amazing stuff. He talks about the physics and he does loads of online um, studies. He developed something called the Super Mario Effect, which is basically in principle, all you have to do is see everything you do as a game. 
And when you gamify things, you see it as a challenge. So life's obstacles become challenges and it becomes exciting and it's a way for you to overcome them. So when you play Axie and even if you get terrible cards, you know, try and think of really creative ways for you to overcome the problem that you're having and then you find much more fulfillment and you progress further. So the underlying message of the video is, you know, try to see life's obst obstacles as challenges and find creative ways to solve them. And look at this meme that I came across um, in the video that Mark Rober did, um, which gives you two um, ideas of the plan of life and the reality. Now, when you look at this, um, you go, oh, yeah, isn't isn't reality difficult, you know, but actually isn't reality more fun? Like from, from your plan on the bike to, to the finish line is a straight line. You'll be done in what, 30 seconds? But look at the reality one. You get to go on your bike down cliffs, up. You get to run across ladders. You get to sail. You get to zip rope, um, climb mountains, move boulders. So all those things make life more interesting. So don't see challenges or difficult gameplay as um, a setback. Try to see it as a creative process where you can learn from it and then you can use that to be happier and progress and I want that kind of feeling to go into my community I want people in my community to be really proactive and really um, happy with the game and have fun you know I don't want anyone just sat there grinding SLP God knows how long all day because I don't want someone just to be that bored you know I, I don't want that I want you to have fun um, so let's say that the next magic word is community. Okay, so what I do not want, and this is very important, guys, so please do pay attention. Um, I don't want my scholars to not be active in the community. I'm not just going to give you a scholarship account and then you just disappear and just mine SLP and expect a payment. Um, I have a Discord. I want people to be on there, encouraging other members, speaking to other scholars, talking in the strategy, and just being a, an active presence in the community. I also don't like it when um, I've had scholars who I've had to remove because I give them three scholars, uh, sorry, three axes, and then three days later they go, this is too difficult, um, please give me more axes. And I'm like, well, you know, this cost me a lot of money and it's a gift. And you're basically just throwing that gift back in my face and saying, I don't want this, give me something else. And I mean, I'm sorry, but I've got other people that will use that properly. And this relates back to the previous slide of the mindset. You know, I want people to have a really good mindset during this game. So also, I don't like people who request days off or transfer accounts. Now, let me explain. If you're ill, I'm not going to be turning up at your door and being like, oh my God, you didn't do this. I give my scholars a little bit of allowance. If you miss a day, that's totally fine. If your electricity goes off, that's totally fine. But what I don't want is for you to message me and be like, hey, um, I need this weekend off um, and maybe four days and then I'm just going to maybe come back later or maybe I'll give it to my friend to play while I'm away. I'm, I, I don't want that, guys. Like, You don't choose who the scholars are. I do. If you're unwilling to commit to making the minimum requirement every day, then maybe the scholarship process isn't for you. I also don't like the scholars who DM spam me. So I've, um, I get this quite a lot. The moment I go onto Discord, I get tons of DMs from people asking for scholarship, um, telling me life stories, giving me their profile, basically a CV. And... Um, I just I just block people straight away because I don't have time to respond to everybody. Um, I don't like having alerts all the time. It really annoys me when people um, will then follow up a day later and be like, hey, wh why are you not replying? What's this? What's this? I mean, you know, I don't like blocking people and especially what's going on right now in the Axie verse with a few YouTubers and the key developers. I, I don't think blocking is a great idea, but I use my computer a lot. I use it for work, presentations with people. I don't like to turn off my DMs because I'd like my scholars to be able to get hold of me if they do. But every time you DM me, it creates an alert on my screen. So that interrupts me when I'm filming videos. It interrupts me when I am presenting in front of people. So I prefer just to not do that. Uh, and also calling me sir in every sentence. Now, I understand that it's a language thing and it's a country thing, but just so you know, sir is very formal in British, uh, in English, sorry. And um, I don't want a formal relationship. I want a friend relationship. So just drop the sir when you speak to me. And last but least is I don't like people sending me pictures of sick children or them in hospital and giving me this lifelong story about why they should be a scholar because they really need it. Because 
it's not that I'm not empathic to your needs. You know, I, I do a lot of um, work for charities. I'm very altruistic as a person, but what I don't need is it thrown in my face. And I, I feel like when people do that, they are trying to make me feel bad and guilty into giving them a scholarship. And I see that as a little bit dishonest and, and I don't like that. So if I start, uh, sorry, when I get people like that sending me those messages, I just, again, I just block and remove and they will never get a scholarship. So for this slide, let's say the magic word is understand. So how to get a scholarship from me? Okay, so first of all, join my Discord. So you can go to ap1.gg in any web browser that will take you straight to the uh, Discord invite. Be active in my community. I have a ranking system. So every month I have SLP, AXS and scholarship giveaways and they are based on your rank. When you get to a certain rank, you will... Um, receive different roles and those roles entitle, entitle you to private access to other channels where you can enter competitions. And because I want active people, it is based on how active you are, how many people you respond to, if people like you, if people don't, you know, all that kind of stuff. There are also some random tasks put in there that I do that will give you bonus XP for the time. Uh, once you've done that and you receive those roles, you just enter into the um, the competitions and then there you go. <laughs> um, also subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, I sometimes will do competitions on YouTube and I sometimes will just do spare of the moment competitions, free access, maybe a scholarship giveaway. Um, so always subscribe and hit that notification button. I do make it a requirement when you sign up to the form, so it might as well be prepared and do it today. Okay. The next magic word I'm going to say, and the final word, is Pikachu. So remember that. There you go, guys. You've had all the words now, so you should be able to use that for um, the application. Okay, so what you get from me is for the first three months, you get a 50-50% SLP split. And I just do that so because I only make the minimum requirement very low um, because I don't want to, like, literally bombard you straight away and be like, go ahead, you have to be earning 300 SLP a day, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just do the very basic, which is the adventure and the quest, and they're very easy to complete. And once you do that, you've met your, your quota and you get used to the game. And after three months, once if you pass those and you feel like you want to continue and carry on, I changed the um, SLP to 60-40, where you get 60% and I get 40. Um, and after that, I will be doing more increasing, but I'm still kind of working out because I'm still quite new to all this guy. So, you know, bear with me. Um, and finally, I have random surprises, giveaway bonuses, special Discord channels and referral bonuses that all come as perks to being one of my scholars. So when you become one of my scholars, you'll be in the scholar channel. You'll be able to ask questions and talk about that. So that brings us to the end of the video, guys. If you are interested, as I said, in being one of my scholars, head over to my Discord, ap1.gg. Also, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Be active in my community. Be a positive force. And I really look forward to um, interacting with you guys. Bye-bye.